All right. Yes, please. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The mayor has called the special council meeting to order. Vice Mayor Kaplan. Here. Council Member De La Cruz. Here. Council Member Gross. Here. Mayor Lindsay. Here. Council Member McCormick. Here. Council Member Moss. Here. Council Member Petros. Here. We do have a quorum, Mayor. Mayor, if we may please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Please, please. Gary, you... I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item, Mayor's public comments. Let me open uh, this up for public comments. Our first speaker is Mike Davey. All right, Mike Davey, 50 Ocean Lane Drive. Uh, I am the chair of the underground uh, task force, and we just want you all to get this contract signed so that we can get to work. That's thank it. you. Thank you. Didn't know we had a task force, but thank you. You voted for it. <laughs> Put me on it. <laughs> it was kind of informal. But thank you. It's been formalized. It's been put, you just formalized it. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Okay. Um, <clears throat> do we have a presentation or are, are we feeling that uh, we are good? Go, folks. Shall I read the title of the resolution? Yes, a resolution of the Village Council of the Village of Key Biscayne, Florida, approving the individual project order for professional engineering services, providing for authorization of services, providing for implementation, and providing for an effective date. Moved. Second. Thank you. I guess um, I may have some questions. Okay, could we good. could we start with Let's just see. what changed from the last meeting to this meeting of what we have printed in Absolutely. front of us? Absolutely. Let's. We do have a document here, but I understand that it's a a living document that has been evolving. So if you could please um, let us know what the changes are you have in the last uh, couple of days met with a lot of the council members who gave you some feedback, shared some priorities and concerns, and I believe that you've been. Um, redrafting accordingly so please let us know what the changes are sure uh, Josh Horning project manager with Kimley Horn um, so in the last few days um, in talks with staff and council members um, we've uh, managed to um, reduce the scope a bit and the fee um, as requested um, the two items that were uh, two, two scope items that were removed from from the proposal, um, one of them is a um, public outreach um, scope, uh, including two public pop-up events that were more informational question and answer forms for the public. Um, those were that was identified pre in previous conversations with uh, uh, Weiss Sirota um, about and, and wanting to remove those from from the uh, scope. So we've done that. Um, we've also reduced um, the number of council meetings we'll be attending to just the one for. Uh, master plan presentation, um, and so um, in addition to that, we've um, revisited the uh, meet hourly meetings task as well as the public outreach task, <coughs> and so we've reduced um, the scope a bit on the meetings, and we're able to <coughs> get the uh, budget number down uh, on that task to uh, seventy-eight thousand, uh, around seventy-eight thousand um, dollars, and then. Uh, for the public outreach, we were able to um, reduce that a little bit more um, and got that down to uh, $118,000 and change. Uh, exact numbers. Uh, public outreach, task 7, 118727 and task 8 meetings down to $78,693. Tasks 1 through 6 have not changed. Thank you. That's very helpful. Now do we have, um, yeah, would just, you like to, <clears throat> to lead? Sure. I just want to ask one question about the hourly meetings that you just mentioned. You, you have specific things there in the scope. And my understanding when I read the contract previously is that it's a it's hourly not to exceed, basically. Correct. So if we needed you to come to another council meeting, but maybe you weren't using the hours for another meeting that you might have taken, 
you know, this wouldn't be an additional charge as long as we're just not exceeding that. And if we're exceeding that, you would tell us, well, we came to three council meetings because that was what was required. And there's another meeting, so now we're coming into that. that Absolutely. That area. Yeah. And we would get prior authorization for that. Okay. Of, yeah. Excellent. But one of the things that we can control is um, when they when they are scheduled <coughs> to make sure it's time certain and that um, we're efficient and and uh, w and con considered at their time and, and of the expense so that's easy to control and there did seem to be some overlap in 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 meetings and outreach which I think is just still incredibly proactive and, and, and aggressive, but uh, streamlined at the same time. Any additional questions? Um, <clears throat> just in the reso, um, just to fix something, the <clears throat> last where, the second to the last whereas authorizes the manager there seems to be a glitch in the sentence. It's, it's really to pay for the services contained in the IPO. <coughs> but then getting into the contract, if you want my comments, here we go. Is this your contract? This is this is our contract, yep. People sign this? Yeah. Well, it, it was worked through with Weiss Sirota uh, pretty, pretty intensively. A so. couple thoughts. Um, and I'll try to avoid the nits. The one nit is you twice define consultant. You define it in the first paragraph, and then you redefine it in the second paragraph. But um, more substantively, it seems to me that the way you characterize services as something distinct from additional services uh, was confusing to me. They're all services, and I suppose additional services are those that we agree on and memorialize in an IPO, just like any services. <clears throat> Um, as far as the economics in that in that sort of rubric, um, it seems to me that the expenses should be your actual expenses without markup, if that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, the reference to the village manager being our representative is correct, but you name Mr. Gilbert. This he will be um, swinging in a hammock in somewhere in the uh, Rocky Mountain states by the time this moves forward. So we should include his successor in that role. Um, let's see. In the, in the client's responsibilities, this is kind of a thought question for us. I think we are undertaking appropriately to turn over to Kimley Horn all of the data of the sorts and types that are listed here. But we're not responsible for taking from that data project-specific suggestions or design plans. And I read section two, especially in like sub B, <coughs> as, as maybe bleeding into a, a, a responsibility that is really yours. We're providing you with the data points that we have. You're working from those data points and you're coming up with the design. So I don't know whether you see it the same way, Chad, but um, that thought occurred to me in B and in B and E. In in the area where we talk about also in section two, we're going to bear all costs that are associated with this whole scope of our responsibility. That's right, but I'd like to say that our responsibility for those costs will not be duplicative of other costs that are included in your scope of work that we're paying for directly. So, for example, um, you know, if the scope includes under the access agreement that you describe inspections and we're separately paying for those <clears throat> because the IPO imposes those charges on us, you're not going to surcharge us for the same inspections under this section that otherwise makes it our responsibility to pay for those inspections separately. So it's a simple fix, but it's it's the fix is it's without duplication. That makes sense. Um, we talk here in section three about continuous progress. Uh, 
is it realistic to make that as an assumption that supports the pricing and the timing given the nature of this work? There will be, it will be bumpy progress because of the nature of the work. So it seemed to me that the, um, the out on pricing where, you know, this is not like um, building a Buick, there's going to be discretionary, I don't know, stops and starts is the right way to describe it, but there will be time within which you're figuring out what to come back to us on, and we'll have to review it and, and respond to you, which we will do promptly. You, you make us do that, and that's good discipline for us. But I think the, it's just a wrong assumption that pricing depends on continuity. And it's just wording, because I don't, I don't think that's what you intend, but that's what it says. Yeah, I think I think that that verbiage is more um, more for you know a an imposed stop in work from from the village's perspective and and or attending additional meetings in in that work stoppage that weren't accounted for in our schedule. And I agree with that fully. That, and that's right. That's reasonable. And we we can't put you in that position. So the points here where we have to uh, to deal with your deliverables promptly is is important, and we get that. I do see it as a continuous process, and it's on us to keep it moving. It's it, it is it is worded in a way that predicates pricing on an assumption that is not compatible with the nature of this job. So if you'll think about that, and if you have a suggestion to address my concern about having a price out. Think about it. What's the deal with retainers in 5A? Are, are, is there retainage in this job? This says retainers will be held by consultant, which is you. If there's retainage, wouldn't we be holding the retainage? Yeah, I didn't read anything on, retain, uh -uh. on retainer. It's in the third sentence. No, I know it's in here, but I, in, in the Exhibit A, I didn't see no, any price in there. Right, right. that's not... And, you know, your lien rights, when we describe property, it comes up in this access agreement that you've attached. Property means what? It means the swales? <laughs> Public property, right? It, the right of way. All right of way. <laughs> it doesn't mean private property. No, it can't. Right. No, they, they can't. They can't. <laughs> Well, the problem with that is, let's go back to uh, where we talk about you have access under this access agreement to public and private property. Access, yeah. But that's access and it's the waivers that are attached in order to. But you can't lien private property. They can't lien. It's, they're not, no. You want you don't mind putting that in there, clarifying it? No, no. We're taking our property. That's property. Not, that was not your intent. But that's no. Within the scope, really. I don't. Um, I, I wouldn't include the first sentence in five D, but it's that, that's the way I would do it. I would exclude the <clears throat> sentence about contingencies. I would uh, think to eliminate the last two sentences in seven. And that's pretty much all I got. Thank you. I'm sorry, Frank, what is your concern on contingency? Um, well, contingency, I, I understand what he, where he's coming from. Uh, you know, uh, uh, contingency is contingent upon them doing their work. Uh, you know, so, I mean, any contingency is not really the right word. The client agrees that payment is not subject to any contingency. I wouldn't. Their work is a contingency. And so, yeah. I mean, I, I know that that's not what they mean, but, I mean, it should be clarified. I think they mean a success view. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, right. Okay. You can, I mean, that can be clarified. What's, there's no success <laughs> I, I understand. That's why it's saying that it's, it's not that type of agreement. Mm -hmm. That payment to consultant is not subject to any contingency. That you pay them for their services. We, they bill, they work, they bill, we pay them. That's it. They're Strike that sentence. It doesn't really apply. It doesn't apply, in my opinion. Um, like the boilerplate. You know, the indemnities and all that stuff. 
Frank, are you done? I Lisa's like, like Are one. you chomping at the bit? You you go. I'm not going to go ahead and finish. So on uh, 19B, we talk about um, <coughs> this is another easy fix. You talk about having no responsibility for anybody else. But then in the next breath, you have the right and discretion to hire subconsultants or subcontractors. You have to be responsible for them. I can take the point, nobody else that we hire directly, but your own subs, you're responsible for. Right, right. That's in 19B. This is for dealing with construction phase services, so it's specific to managing the, the contractor. It's a blanket statement. They're not responsible for anybody else. But then you go two paragraphs down and they can augment their staff with subconsultants. You're responsible for them. Mm -hmm. Correct, but it's two, it's two different functions. Correct. One, one function is doing construction phase services to manage the contractor. The other is a sub that works for them. It doesn't say that. But I, I think that's the intent of yes. So that's an easy thing to fix. Uh, the only other thing is it it's probably a good idea to say that the IPOs are supplement or part of this agreement. I think you say the reverse in the IPO, that this agreement is incorporated in the IPO. But this the IPOs really define the scope, the price. Right. And they are part of this agreement, it seems to me, each and every time one is entered into. Right. Um, when you, okay, so that's, that's it. That's all I got. Okay. Luis, you've got the floor. I had a couple of those, but uh, in, in paragraph uh, 2B, which uh, Frank pointed out before. 2B2, it says, appropriate professional interpretations of all of the foregoing. So what kind of uh, professional interpretations are you expecting from us with regards to it? All we can do is give you copies of what we have. We, you know, we, we can't, we're, we're, you're not asking us to commit to hire other professionals in order to interpret uh, plans that you are going to be delivered. No. Right, so no. that needs to be clarified, right? Because, I mean, if, if, if we're supposed to furnish, I mean, I don't have, I know what we, we're going to furnish all of the plans and everything, all the records that we have. Correct, yeah. But, you know, we're not engineers, so, you know, then at that point it becomes your thing and then you take care of it, right, Chad? Correct. I think this, this statement is really that when you get a, a lab result, for example, there's a, some, a professional that we have that has provided a summary or interpreting the data. I think that's what that's referring to. But um, we could, you know, clarify that that subsection. Well, so long, so long as it clarifies that we don't have to do, do anything other than deliver what we have. Right. Well, that's what it says at the beginning of B to furnish a consultant. But we can make it clear. Um, we can clear that up. That's not a problem. And uh, going back to the one point that you that you pointed out regarding um, uh, consultants, show uh, uh, re regarding them not being responsible for times that that they're. Um, I think that's important to clarify that. What they what they mean by that? Because it says the times for performance shall be extended as necessary for periods of suspension or delay resulting from circumstances the consultant does not control. I understand that, and you can never be responsible for something like that. But then there's got to be a limit at some point that you know, uh, because what Frank was saying is that then then we run into a, a cost problem if we don't have cross reference. You know. Uh, I don't. I don't mean to change the economics at all. I just think it's not worded in a in a way that's really correlates to the nature. It's confusing of this to me. Also, okay, that, that that part. So maybe maybe Frank can, can have you know, he's our scholar. Okay. <laughs> no. 
So what's the process? I think, I think also you have to remember that each IPO is going to set the compensation. Right. So, I mean, it's it's very specific, and there's a time frame in here. So um, I think that we can clarify both of your concerns, but remember that each IPO um, will come back to you, we'll set it, and then there'll be a scope and a time frame. So. It's, it's sort of this global proposition that despite the fact that we agree on that, it can be trumped by circumstances right. that are likely to occur. You know, that are, it, it's the wrong assumption. If you want, I'll give you some text in the next day or so, if that helps. I don't want to change the economics. It's just it's the language. Fair enough. Any other discussion? Do we do we say that we're going to make the adjustments in <clears throat> in the and, and Frank, you may have already mentioned this under the second to the last. Whereas you said the the price in there is still showing it different than the price in the yeah. It yeah should. There'll have to be a, a the resolution will be adopted as amended. Uh, okay. I think the total price. Someone correct me, but I think it's four ninety one four thirty six. Yeah, is something that like revised? that. Um, I don't know if you guys, I just did it now. But yeah, I did it a minute ago, but I, then I kept going with the differences in the percentage. And I'm, I'm at a different number now. Yeah. We can add it up. I just wanted to make sure that matches what we have in the IPO. Yes. I think it's 294.016 plus 118.727 plus 78.96. 90, can we make an amendment to the resolution now when we're approving it? Yeah, just when, to match you, it? when you approve it, you'll approve it as okay. amended. Um, as well as all the changes that were suggested, the agreement is just being approved in substantially the form, so we'll go back and make the, the changes. The tweet. <coughs> Gary. Uh, I just want to say that all the changes and issues we discussed when I met with you earlier, you've addressed, and I do appreciate that very much. Sure, no problem. Ditto. Um, as amended. The resolution as amended. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. If I may have a motion to adjourn. Moved. Moved. Looking forward to working with yeah. you. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Josh, thank you very Six much. Six months. We appreciate it.